Hey YouTube, Matt back with another project. The most requested thing I have gotten from you guys is more burn time on the welder after the modifications. And as it turns out, I have a project which is gonna require some welding. So we're gonna knock out two things here at the same time. The thing that I need is a trailer hitch receiver that I can mount onto the three-point hitch of my tractor. Uh, this is something that you can buy at Tractor Supply or mail order a couple of places. It runs about 150 bucks, something like that. But here's the thing, the ones that you buy commercially are, are very heavy duty. You know, they're rated for a full category one hitch that could lift, you know, 2,000 pounds, which equates to a 20,000 pound trailer. Uh, I just don't need anything nearly that beefy. Uh, the utility trailer that I have is a 7,000 pound trailer, which means at worst it's 700 pounds of tongue weight. And honestly, I don't expect to move it around full, uh, mostly empty, which means we're looking at more like 100, 150 pounds of tongue weight. And so my plan is to make it out of this. This is scrap angle iron. It is 1 8 thick, 125 for those of you who like thousands. Um, I picked up a whole pile of this stuff. Uh, it was almost 100 pounds of these little two and three foot lengths of, of this. Um, it's one by one angle, and I paid next to nothing for it. It was a Craigslist thing. It was a guy just getting rid of some, some pieces that he had. Not ideal, right? Uh, you've got a two inch square tube for the receiver, uh, which is something I'm gonna pick up at Harbor Freight, a receiver tube. And so really the rest of it probably ought to be two inch square. Uh, but again, I just don't, I don't need the capacity and I have this metal laying around. So this is what we're gonna go with. Step one in this project is to fabricate a piece of channel out of two pieces of the angle. This is gonna be my main cross piece for uh, going between the link arms of the three point hitch. Uh, I cleaned this up with a grinder a little bit before I, I welded it just to get the mill scale and surface rust off of it and to create ever so slightly of a bevel so that I had some space to fill in with the with the weld bead when I when I put this together. It went really really well. I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna show you the weld bead that we created with the ye old Harbor Freight welder and then I'll show you the flip side. I have ground and polished that down so that I could see what kind of penetration we got the whole way through the weld. And, uh, but I'm gonna keep that a secret for just a minute. So here we are inside the weld of these two pieces of angle to make the channel. Uh, this right here is a start and stop where I repositioned my hands, uh, not terribly successfully, obviously, but you can see, and again, I will refer you to the welder modification videos I'm no welder. Uh, I'm a guy who hacks stuff together from time to time. So I don't claim that this is beautiful uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but I did want to show you that it is possible, it is possible, even with this Harbor Freight 90 amp welder post modifications, to lay down a fairly consistent bead that does in fact penetrate the metal. We'll look at that here in a second uh, with good tie in, right? I don't have any, any undercut on the sides of these things. And uh, sure, there is some splatter. It's flux core welding after all. Uh, even with a, a gas shielded MIG process, you, you won't get zero splatter. So I've got some BBs I have to clean up here, um, but I haven't done anything with this except hit it with a wire brush to knock the slag off of it which uh, by the way, the slag comes off beautifully. Here is the back side of the weld. I hit this with a grinder to make sure we ground all the way down, you know, into what should be between <laughs> the pieces of angle. And then I hit it with a flap disc to just shine it up and try and reveal any issues that we've got. Um, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I have done my best to move the lights around here so that there's a hope of you seeing, um, hopefully you can see in the, in the transition areas here what's going on. Uh, basically, we have a tiny little bit of porosity here on the complete back side of the weld. I don't have any way to know whether this is because the welder just doesn't quite have enough oomph to penetrate this 125 steel, 
or if this is because with this being a flux core process, there's absolutely no shielding on the back of the weld. I mean, honestly, even if this was stick or gas or TIG, you know, any, any welding process, unless you go out of your way to shield the back of the weld, you don't have shield. So this porosity that's down here could very well be from just no, no shielding on the back side. But here's the good news. We have a solid weld the whole way through this thing. We, we penetrated all the way through to the backside, little bits of porosity notwithstanding, and, and I don't see anything that looks like a lack of fusion or, or anything else that would tell me that somehow this is weak. So as far as I am concerned, we now have a one by two piece of, of channel uh, that's not quite as good as a one by two piece of channel formed at the mill, um, but it's gonna more than meet our needs. On the ends of this channel, I need to weld some plate to make kind of an L shape thing on here. And that plate will be where I'm gonna drill a hole to mount the pins that are available from Tractor Supply. They're about five, six bucks each. And they're standard Cat 1 hitch pins that bolt through a hole on your implement and they have the right taper and the D-ring hole and everything so that they, they mount up real nice. First things first, I have to cut out some of this, this plate right here, which uh, happens to be exactly the two inches wide that I need for the end cap, so that's, that's handy. Um, I'm gonna cut, I don't know, maybe three or four inches or something like that. There's no, no harm in making it too long, frankly. And then we will get to welding those onto the ends of our newly created channel. Okay guys, sorry about the noise, but I had to open the garage door because we're getting ready to fire up the welder. Let's put the ground clamp on the vise here. Uh, what I have is I have our little three inch piece uh, cut off and I took it over to the grinder and polished it up. Got it, uh, you know, not that clean, but clean enough. And I beveled the edge of our now piece of channel so that I have a good spot to go all the way around here and fill in with the weld bead. I have a 90 degree magnet in the back helping me to hold this thing and keep it aligned. Um, I'm gonna tack it here on the corners uh, pretty much as far away from the magnet as I can get. And then I'm gonna take the magnet out of there because it does crazy things to the arc. For those of you who are curious, our welder is set on uh, the max power setting and I've got the wire feed on uh, seven. That seems to be, you know, about the right amount of wire for whatever voltage this thing is, is making. Fire in the hole. All right, I went a little nutty <laughs> tacking that thing down in the corners, but uh, no matter, no matter. Now what I'm doing here, I'm just wire brushing off that flux core leaves, leaves a film everywhere for about a hundred miles, so. Anywho, um, we are ready to go ahead and weld this. The magnet is gone. It's, it's not going anywhere. Uh, what I'm gonna do for the sake of trying to keep it relatively square is I'm gonna weld this side and then I'm gonna weld this side um, and then I will come back and I'll do the long side.
Okay, and while it is still good and warm, I'm gonna go ahead and weld up the inside. Get the wire brush going here and see what we ended up with. Okay. Ow, that's hot. Um, well, like I said numerous times, I'm no welder, but that is not going anywhere. We have fine, fine, fine weld the whole way around there. Okay, it looks like crap, but it's not going anywhere. We, I believe, ow, ow, ow. Yep, we stayed pretty square on the whole thing. So uh, now we just get to lather, rinse, repeat on the other end. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm no welder, but I'm pretty confident that uh, these things, although ugly, are structurally sound for what we're doing. Cross piece is done, yeah, almost. I still have to drill the holes in the ends and install those pins, but that's not really a big deal. What I'm gonna do next time is I'm gonna actually acquire the receiver tube. I'm gonna weld that to the top of this, and then I'm gonna to have to decide what I wanna do about installing some sort of an apparatus to connect the top link. Uh, but I haven't figured that out, so I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead, and we'll sort it out next time. Stay safe, YouTube.